Welcome to the virtual edition of BMO IFSA Toronto 2020. Today we're going to be talking about Irfan Khan, our very dear Irfan Khan, the man, the actor, the legend, with a very, very accomplished panel, directors who worked with him, directors who wanted to work with him, actors who admired him, actors who worked with him, actors who've known him since his NSD days. Dada, uh, when did you first meet Irfan and what was your very first uh, impression of him? Oh, um, I think I, I met him um, just after, I think, uh, a press, press show of Vicky Dona, not press, a preview of Vicky Dona. And he came to me and, and Juhi and he was, he was really, um, he was quite impressed and he just came and told us, told me and that uh, I want to work with you. Let's do something together. Can we collaborate? I said, I, even, even I was really happy that, you know, and at that time, Irfan was um, actually the real international star of our, our film industry. Uh, he had worked with some of the best directors around the world and India too. So I felt really um, uh, honored and, you know, quite a privilege that he asked me that to be, uh, to collaborate. Uh, and since then, I think we were in touch. Um, but he, I would show him my films and he will react. Uh, so he found something very um, spiritual, I think, about my films. So I don't know why and how, but, you know, and then that's how we connected also uh, between us. Um, yeah, and then, of course, uh, uh, finally we worked in Piku. So that's right. And we were supposed to work on many other projects that we were talking on. Uh, but yes, I think that these are the, that's what I remember that I, when I first met him. And what was your uh, impression when, I mean, even maybe before you met him, what, what was the sort of sense that you got of him? Um, like when you met him or well, like? Well, well, I think when he, I think when he, when he watches a film, I think he, mm -hmm. uh, he dives into it so much, of course, like everyone else. But something happens to him, for example. Um, uh, so, for example, he saw a wiki donor, but what, I, I hope what everybody saw in wiki donor, he, he, saw, he saw the director and the writer, possibly. He possibly saw me, you know. Uh, so, I think that's a special quality that he had, I think. Uh, so, seeing a film, you see the, the person behind and the integrity behind. I think that's, uh, that's so wonderful of somebody getting it. So that's one thing I think that was his uh, deep quality. Uh, for example, when I was actually shooting with him and working with him, uh, he will, uh, uh, I won't do much rehearsals with him uh, because he's not the person who will do most blocking and rehearsal. So he will just, he will just tell me, uh, just, just keep, keep uh, talking Dada. So I'll just keep talking about, not only about the character, about various things. And I think he will, try to understand what I am as a person or firstly what I'm trying. So I think that's a very, that's a very different quality of a, of, a, of an actor and an artist, I, I say. And, um, and of course, then we became quite good friends also. Uh, so, so Irfan is, is, is like an addiction, you know, so mm -hmm. you really want to go back and work all the time. So he's like, an, he's quite an addiction. Gurinder, I believe Irfan met you uh, in London uh, not too long ago and you were talking about working on a script together. Was that the first time you met him or had you met him at uh, some international film festival? What was the first time like for you when you met him? The first time I saw him on screen was uh, in The Namesake. And I was very, very impressed with him in The Namesake. In fact, I thought he was... He was, you know, singularly, you know, the most amazing performer in that film, given the time that he had to create his, his character, actually. And I remember the scene when he gets news that his mother has died or someone has died and he was on the end of a pier. And he, the way he, he performed the, the news that your loved one has died physically with his body 
his sort of legs gave way underneath him. And it was just a incredibly real moment of acting. And, uh, and that struck in my head. And then obviously I, uh, Anoop and I are friends. And so I've seen him in Anoop's work. And then I met him in Cannes about um, seven years ago. And, and I met him walking along the Quasette. And, and I didn't realize how tall he was. He was very tall, I didn't realize. So I met, I, he was very tall and he had bleached hair. <laughs> His hair was all blonde. And, uh, and then he, he stopped me and he went, good in the like that. And I said, yes, hello, how are you? And um, he said, what are you doing? And I said, oh, I'm working on a film on partition. And I was making, uh, planning my film Viceroy's house. Uh, and, uh, and he looked at me and he went, are what is there left to say about partition? <laughs> we all made, we all know everything there is to know about partition. Why are you making a film on partition? So he sort of gave me a whole lecture actually. And then I said, okay, well, my film's based on uh, secret British documents that have never been revealed. And then he went, oh, and I said, and also I said, you look at me and I'm Indian. And I am Indian, but I'm also British. And, and my perspective will be very different to everything and anything that you might do or an Indian person might do from India. So then we actually had quite an amazing conversation when once I was able, you know, he, he immediately latched onto the fact that he was thinking in a limited way in terms of what I was saying. So much so that then when I was about to make my film, Blinded by the Light, I reached out to him to come and play this British uh, Pakistani father. And he was super excited because, you know, he was playing a different kind of role. And, uh, and, and we met, he came to my house uh, in London and we met, we had lunch and he talked about it. And, you know, like all actors, he talked about making his part bigger. <laughs> He said, why can't, we give him a, why can't we give him a voiceover? Why can't we make him more the central character? Why? <laughs> so, so that was fun. Um, so I thought, okay, so you're like every other actor in that respect, if fun, even though we worship you. Um, but we had a fantastic uh, time and took lots of photos and he met the kids and then he left. And uh, the week after that, he got the news about his uh, illness, sadly. And so then, you know, he went into terrible shock. And so then we, you know, I moved on, but that was a shame because we'd come that close. But um, I just want to say, I just, I really loved Vicky Dona as well as a movie. And I think that what I saw in it, I'm sure Irfan did too, was I thought it was, after a long time, it was a film that really transcended uh, the kind of Indian production values of Indian cinema in that respect. I thought it was a truly uh, international movie in that it, it could have been released globally, I felt, you know, um, as opposed to being an Indian oh, crossover movie, if you know what I mean. And yeah. in fact, I remember at the time feeling God, I wish they'd got in touch with me because I could have helped them make this an international movie because I thought the production values of it were so tremendous. I thought it was hysterical, not least because the antagonist was called gender. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Thank the you thing so much. About, you're welcome. But the thing is, it was full of it was full of life and laughter and you know and a comedy but it was also about masculinity and i think if i look at irfan's work and what certainly the work he's done with anoop you know he he was one actor that was really uh, interested in exploring masculinity we even saw that in lunchbox and i think that's what stood him apart from so many other indian actors you know he had that ability to um to explore that side of him, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Hans, uh, I wanted to uh, come to you now and ask, uh, when did you first meet Irfan and uh, what was your first sort of 
impression of him. I believe you were you were pretty good friends. Well, I don't know if we were very good friends, but I mean, I've known Irfan since 1993, since I began my career. And, uh, you know, I was, I saw Irfan for the first time was editing something called Saad Pere. Very, it was a series of short stories for Doordarshan. And uh, there was a story about a girl who is stuck in an abusive marriage. And the abusive husband was Irfan Khan. So I saw it and I asked the director, I said, who is this fellow? Uh, he said, you know, he's that guy from uh, uh, Drishti. There was a film called Drishti in which Irfan was there. And I said, oh shit, he's the guy who made out with Dimple Kapadia. Oh man. So I was actually, the first time when I saw him, I was a bit pissed off because, you know, I remember <laughs> watching Drishti and saying, who is this guy who's getting, uh, you know, uh, who's with Dimple Kapadia in this film? He suddenly, Matlab Shekhar Kapoor ko chhodke, She's sleeping with, who is this guy? So it started with that, my tryst with uh, Irfan Khan. But uh, yeah, but later on, I mean, I, I kept meet, uh, meeting common friends, Saurabh Shukla uh, and uh, Ashish Vidyarthi and a lot of common friends through whom I used to keep meeting Irfan. And uh, I mean, Irfan was you know, very, very disarming in the way he was in his honesty. And uh, I... I work wise, you know, I remember I watched uh, Star Bestsellers, uh, Ek Sham Ki Mulakat with you and Irfan. I mean, that was the first time we really interacted on work. I saw that and, you know, suddenly everybody had sort of typecast Irfan into those evil eyes. You know, they, everybody saw his eyes as evil. Okay, he's a good villain, villain material. He had been cast in some film also as a, uh, you know, villainous character. And I suddenly saw your uh, short film, Digmanshu had directed that. And I mean, Irfan was spectacularly charming. And uh, I remember I, I took the number, I called Irfan and we spoke for a long time. And uh, he said, you know, Kuch karte, we have to work together. And uh, it never happened. And uh, yeah, that was the first time, I mean, I uh, really spoke to him. And then we, we spoke, we used to meet often. We, uh, we used to drink a lot together. Uh, uh, and uh, we used to talk a lot of shit. Uh, and, uh, you know, so he was one of those people with whom I could freely, uh, I mean, talk uh, talk shit with. And I wish, you know, I, I love uh, directing actors who I can talk shit with. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, that never happened. We used to keep talking. I mean, he, uh, he sort of, you know, his trajectory and he sort of saw my own trajectory. So when I sort of made a return to films with Shahid, uh, you know, he was one of the first persons to call me, ask me uh, to watch the film. He was very encouraging of Rajkumar Rao. And he told me that, you know, this uh, boy is a rare uh, talent. He's a rare actor. And, you know, achha hai, achha hai. I hope he remains this way. And uh, I mean, in that much, you know, uh, Irfan said a lot, uh, you know, uh, uh, it, he uh, he would mumble a lot. So, I mean, we, we knew each other uh, for the longest time and yet uh, I don't think I never, ever knew him. I know I know Irfan better than he knows me because I know Irfan through his work. He left behind such a spectacular body of work. And, uh, you know, uh, you keep thinking about what could have been. Indeed. So just a small snippet, <laughs> few years back, you know, since Shujit is there on the, uh, on the panel. So I was on the jury. I won't name the award. I, na I told you about the award. On, I gave you the name on the phone, but I was in jury of a popular films award. And, uh, you know, Piku was part of the uh, films that we were looking at. And uh, I put Irfan's name up. And so one, uh, you know, and this, this is how unfair I felt, you know, when a person is alive, his art is not seen for what it is. So there are people from the mainstream with me on the uh, jury and I said, you know, Irfan for Piku uh, for one of the major awards. So they said, yeah, Irfan is Irfan. And I lost it. I said, you know, Irfan is Irfan because you don't know what Irfan is. And I'm sorry, I was about to. So I said, you, you don't know what it means to be Irfan. You know, it's, it's such a huge compliment that Irfan is Irfan. But I mean, this is what, uh, you know, unfortunately, when a person is alive, you say, Kya rahe, he's Irfan, he's Irfan. I mean, it's such a casual uh, thing. And I mean, I, uh, 
I wanted I I left the room for for a bit because I found that very very uh, uh, upsetting, uh, you know. Uh, and then I came back and I said, you know, actually it was a compliment. I mean, it's uh, it's there's a naivety, uh, but in that naivety there's a compliment. So yeah, I mean, Piku is one of my most uh, favorite, one very very beloved films of Irfan yeah. and in general, one of my very beloved films, very very spiritual again. Delightful, delightful film. Yeah. All the films that have been mentioned, name say Piku. Uh, so we'll move on to uh, Meeta. Hi Meeta. Hi there. Hi. Uh, Meeta, uh, uh, I, I found out today, I didn't know this. Uh, Meeta has been, uh, has probably known Irfan longer than any of us. She knew him in NSP. And uh, I'm, I'm really, really curious to know about, uh, so I want to understand that when you first met him in NSD as a young uh, lad, uh, what did you think of him? What was he like? He was your batchmate, right? Yes. So uh, we're talking about 1984, which was a time when we had all just joined NSD in the first year. So Irfan, his uh, wife, Shutafa, I, a lot of people, uh, we were all classmates, batchmates. So we were the 84 to 87 batchmates. So for three years, we were all together. And um, at that time, remember, there's only films and that were mainstream films and some art films which are defined by Sham Benigal, uh, which are defined then by Nasiruddin Shah, and Shabana Azmi and Smita Pata and Om Puri. And then we have theater, which is what we had all come in for. And uh, well, the first impression of, that I had of Irfan was uh, that there was this tall, lanky guy. And then as you know, we, we are, all of us were considered a, an unusually talented batch by our seniors and the staff and faculty and all. And everybody was highly individualistic, really. So when we all were in NSD, we were pretty much trying to do our own thing. We'd come. I had come from having done a post graduation in English. So, this is the first time that you enter an institute not because your parents have told you to go there, because those, there's no parent ever told you to go and become an actor. It was like, what are you doing? You're ruining your life. So, all of us had practically left home with the parents shouting behind our back saying, You are ruining your life. Your future is consigned to the gutter. So, we were all rebels. We had all come to do to study at drama school for three years. We had committed to give three years of our lives to a place where we were going to be locked up. And uh, Irfan was, um, what I remember for Irfan was at that time, we would fight a lot. He, I see photographs of him and me now, old photographs that we all have, is that he's either twisting my arm or pulling my plaid and he's pointing a finger at me and trying to argue about something with me. And I remember we used to have these wonderful tussles about creative ideas and he used to love pulling my leg. I could get pulled really easily. Um, we also, I also used to pull his leg a lot because at that time Irfan was highly influenced by Nasiruddin Shah. He thought Nasir is the ultimate in realistic acting. So everything that he did would somehow look like he was doing Nasir. So the minute he would, we would be in an improvisation in class or we would be rehearsing for a play, and Irfan would come on and he had intently prepared his role and he would, the minute he would open his mouth and say, Irfan, Nasir, or Nasir, you know? And he would say, yeah, there. And we would tease him a lot of you're like trying to be Nasir, you know, which now in retrospective is a really good thing because I think it pushed all of us, the criticisms we would have for each other, the way we would needle each other would push us deeper into our own individuality. So um, that was Irfan uh, for me, a guy who was um, not someone, like I had to say it uh, even to his biographer that I said, please don't ask me to say that the minute I saw him, I knew he was going to be a big Hollywood star one day. I said, we didn't even have an idea about going to films those days because uh, films was like far away. There was no television serials really. Television actually came in in 1986 when we were almost in our final year of um, this um, Bunyad and uh, Hamlo came in and that is when we realized that we may have a career on television. Otherwise, there was just theater and there was this huge chasm in between and then there was Bollywood films. And of course, the middle cinema gave some hope that, you know, people could get represented in um, cinema. So therefore, Irfan's huge uh, obsession with Nasir, which we really would rile him about and, you know, he, and it's extraordinary because over the years, um, when you see him now, you see what a long way the huge long trajectory. 
so to cut it short because you know you have three minutes and what I'll say is that uh, a lot of videos have surfaced now, um, which uh, Irfan and I did a lot of theater together. In drama school, we were cast a lot together, and as well as um, when we got out of drama school. So uh, the thing was, uh, when you see some of his stuff on YouTube now, like there was a play called Blue, uh, Blue Horses on Red Grass, which we did in 1987 when we had just graduated. Um, he played Lenin in that, and I played Clara Zetkin, the German uh, communist. Uh, who was also Lenin's uh, love interest as well as a colleague. And that video has surfaced. We didn't even know it was recorded. At. And it's interesting that Irfan's uh, performance at that time as an actor was about somebody who would get it right. He would get it right. So while he'd moved away from being Nasiruddin Shah, he was still um, punching it on the beat. You know, he would like, if this was Sa, he would come on the Sa. If it was Ray, he would come on the Ray. But from there, today, what you see was that he actually became an actor who was from a guy who was doing Sarigama, if you take a musical analogy, to a guy who would actually become jazz, you know. I see his performances as someone jazz. He would release these little notes that nobody had even dreamt existed in the composition. Um, so yeah, so Irfan's early days was a Nasiruddin Shah obsession, a lot of mischief, a lot of affection, a lot of laughter, a lot of obsession with uh, getting it right um, a very open uh, guy, but a very closed actor. Uh, but uh, that totally over the years became something different. I do have, even for Serenity, there's a whole trajectory he and I have together. In fact, Anup is also in it. But maybe we'll come, that, come around to that in your next question or something. Yes, yes, for sure. We move on to Vijay. Hey, Vijay. Hi. Hey. Hi, hi. Uh, Vijay, what what was uh, your first meeting with Irfan like and what did you think of him before you met him and what did you think of him um, after you met him? Did, did his first um, meeting with you live up to your expectation of him? So, so yeah, I met him for the first time. Uh, this is 2006, I believe. I was studying at TII uh, at the Film Institute Pune uh, with a batch of 20 other, 19 other actors. We were 20 of us. And one day our head of uh, the acting department came and said, we have Irfan coming in to meet all the students. And uh, we got excited a lot, but there were some boys who got a lot more excited than anybody else. And that's when I realized that some people are crazy about uh, Irfan Khan because I grew up in a household where movies were not a constant thing. I barely saw any films growing up at only when I went to the film school, I understood I have to watch films. So, in came Irfan and he was wearing a pista green shirt and beige pants and uh, the, the chashma was on his head and uh, the, 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 he just completely engulfed uh, the, the, we were all clapping and standing and clapping and he was so uncomfortable. <laughs> his hands were fidgety, he didn't know what to do and he immediately sat down and he's like, bad job, bad job. <laughs> so we all sat down. That was my first time I, I, I saw him in person. But, uh, but I understood that uh, uh, my introduction to Irfan as an actor, of course, I don't have much memory of Chandra Kanta and all, but I remember back in 2005, six, there was a lot of commercials of Hach Achuta Recharge, which Irfan Khan Saab used to do. So, <laughs> he used to play this character, which was the girlfriend of the girlfriend. He used to play this character, which was the girlfriend of the girlfriend. He and they were so captivating. I, fig I saw him as somebody who is already a big star, who is selling brands um, and such a unique voice that like he owned the school that he was in. They were making ads to suit his sensibility. And uh, so he, was in, he, was, he came to meet us because he was shooting for Mighty Heart, uh, a film that he did uh, with Angelina Jolie. And right in the middle of the conversation, when he when he, he was talking to a bunch of us, he's like, "Yar, me go, you didn't go on your phone pe." Okay, what? So somebody asked him, "Where are you going?" Sir? So I have to give cues to Angelina Jolie on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and what's going on here? We don't know. 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 We don't
to i also like i made a mental note that this guy is in pune he's come to meet us but he's still invested in what is happening on the set of course they are equally invested in irfan as well and years later i just i just did something i did a film called ghost stories i'm going to wrap myself up so this is with zoya akhtar it's a short uh, segment in one of the uh, ghost stories uh, in the series so i remember i was in some other country and janvi was doing her shorts and we were supposed to do phone calls and i said i'm going to give my cues and stuff like i planned it all and i did it and i felt like i felt like it was an homage to what i learned from uh, from khan sir how lovely how lovely zakir bhai coming to you um uh, you were very very close to irfan we had a bit of a chat earlier today ji uh, to aapka uh, irfan ke sath aapki pehli mulakat kya thi aur uh, kya uska uh, uska flavor kya tha aapke zehen mein kya chal raha tha jab uh, aap uh, irfan se mile to wo waisa hota na ki bhagwan se aap close feel kar sakte ho bhagwan aapke close hai ki nahi ye aapko andaaza nahi hai तो मेरा उनके साथ वैसा वाला रिश्ता रहा कि मेरे को तो बड़ा क्लोज फील होता था अब आगे मुझे नहीं पता क्या मेरी इरफान साहब से पहली मुलाकात ये रही कि मनप्रीत से हम मिले तो किसी ने बताया कि ये इरफान साहब की मैनेजर है तो एक और वो मनप्रीत में ना एक बड़ी एयर थी मतलब कि अरे इरफान की मैनेजर हूं मैं हां 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 तो वो मैंने कहा अच्छा अच्छा मैं भी आऊंगा हां तो 2000 मेरे ख्याल से 2015 या 16 में एक दिन मुझे मनप्रीत का मैसेज आता है कि सर वांट्स टू टॉक टू यू आई एम लाइक लाइक वुड सर वांट टॉक टू मी मतलब आपको क्या बात करनी होगी मुझसे और बिफोर आई आई जस्ट कॉन्टेम्पलेटिंग कि मैं रिस्पॉन्ड करूं मैसेज का कि हाँ ठीक है अच्छा कि मैं फोन करू मतलब मुझे फोन करना है कि उनका फोन आएगा क्या है इतनी देर में तो फोन बचता है <laughs> और मैंने फोन उठाया और उधर से सीधे इरफान की आवाज आ रही है वो बोल रहे हैं कि अरे जाकिर मैं मैंने कहा हाँ हेलो इरफान बोलो मैं कहा जी जी सर बताइए कहता यार और वो बोलना चालू करते हैं यार वो वीडियो देखा तुम्हारा यार वो बड़ा सही था यार और, और, और वो बोले जा रहे हैं और मैं मैं ऑकवर्ड हो रहा हूँ कि मैं मैंने कहा अरे मैं दो मिनट तक चलता रहा वो मैंने कहा प्लीज आप मत बोलो मेरे को बहुत ऑकवर्ड लग रहा है <laughs> आप बताओ <laughs> बोले नहीं यार कुछ नहीं बस ऐसी बस अच्छा लगा तुम बॉम्बे आओ तो मिलना ना मुझसे तो उसके अगले हफ्ते मैं ट्रैवल करता था मैं अगले हफ्ते उनके घर गया और पहली मुलाकात पे उन्होंने मुझसे चार घंटे बात करी मैं लंच किया सारे जमाने की दुनिया की जितनी बात हो सकती थी हमने सब कर ली इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स से लेकर तो हाउ इट इज बीइंग लाइक व्हाट इज द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ एन इंडियन मुस्लिम वट इज दस्ट ऑफ बींग एन आर्टिस्ट स्टोरीज का क्या इम्पोर्टेंस है और हाउ ही लुक्स और और ना जब मुझे एक बात जो मुझे रियलाइज हुई कि जब वो मुझसे बात कर रहे थे ना तो वो वो ना वो रॉ एनर्जी देख रहे थे कि तू तू बोल ना तू और बोलना <laughs> एक एक होता ना कि वो खा रहे थे मेरे को कि तू बोलता जा अच्छा अच्छा और ऐसे ऐसे कैसे ऐसे क्यों करता है और वैसे क्यों करता है मैंने कहा मैं ऐसे करता हूं ऐसे करता हूं एनीवे ही वाज ही वाज वेरी एडमिनेंट अबाउट यू नो कि अरे यार तुम तुम खुद कुछ लिखो ना यार तुमको कुछ भी लिखने का मन करता है कुछ भी इंटरेस्टिंग आता है मुझे बताना मैंने कहा हां सर मैं बताऊंगा आपको एंड देन आई वाज लाइक चलो ठीक है मैं निकलता हूं तो मुझे घर जो नया घर है उनका उस वक्त वो बन ही रहा था कंस्ट्रक्ट हो रहा था तो मुझे याद है वो आ, बात करते करते कि यार देखो यू नो अच्छा लिखा नहीं जाएगा तो यार देखो हम हमारे साथ प्रॉब्लम क्या हम एक्टर हैं यार अच्छा लिखा नहीं जाएगा तो हम अच्छा करेंगे कैसे तो हमारे अच्छा करने के लिए अच्छा लिखना बहुत जरूरी है एक, एक अलग ही डिस्कोर्स है वो मैंने कभी किसी को आ, किसी इंटरव्यू में भी बोलते हुए मैंने ऐसे नहीं सुना था कि यार अच्छा लिखा नहीं जाएगा तो अच्छा तो मैं सुन रहा हूँ मैं मैं कहा हाँ हाँ मैंने कहा ठीक है मैं बताऊंगा उस वक्त आई एम श्योर मनप्रीत इफ यू रिमेम्बर एक बंगाली फिल्म थी जिसको उन्होंने जिसको उनको रीमेक करना था दिस वो वेरी ओल्ड यार मैं तुमको सीडी दूंगा तुम देखना वो फिल्म में जी 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 बताइएगा आप मुझे ना लिफ्ट खुल गई तो मैंने कहा अब तो हो गया ना मतलब अभी कितना है <laughs> तो मैंने बोला कि चलिए मैं कहा ठीक है मैं चलता हूँ कहता हाँ यार वही मैं बोल रहा था कि देखो क्या है कि तुम तुम्हारे पास नंबर है ना मेरा मैंने कहा जी जी मैंने कहा वो हाँ छोटा नंबर है ना मैंने कहा जी जी बस तो कभी भी फोन करो तुम और घर है यार कभी भी आओ कहा रहते हो सिटी साइड ही रहता बस कभी भी अब लिफ्ट आ गई ग्राउंड फ्लोर पे है ना तो मैंने कहा अब तो वापस जाना होगा ना तो मैंने बोला मैंने कहा चलिए ठीक है फिर है ना कहता हाँ वही यार देखो क्या है कि अब जैसे ये जो फिल्म कर रहा हूँ अब वो लॉबी में चलना चालू कर दिया <laughs> और वो बिल्डिंग ऐसी ना कि वो ऑलमोस्ट रोड पे है वो बिल्डिंग उसका कोई ऐसा नहीं है कि कोई वो कहता ना उसका बरांडा वरांडा नहीं है बिल्डिंग <laughs> आप लॉबी से निकलते सीधे फुटपाथ आता है यार वो लॉबी से निकल के वो फुटपाथ वाला जो गेट है ना उसके पास आ गया मेरा दिमाग खराब हो गया मैंने बोला भैया मैं पकड़ लूंगा अपना रिक्शा प्लीज आप अंदर जाओ यार 
कहता रहा कुछ नहीं होता कुछ नहीं होता कुछ नहीं होता <laughs> यार मैं कर लूंगा प्लीज मेरे को अनकंफर्टेबल हो रहा प्लीज आप अंदर जाओ सो आई थिंक बहुत और वो एज ए राइट मतलब एज एज कमेडियन ना आई विन आई थिंक वी ऑल वी लिव एंड डाई टू मीट न्यू पीपल जहां आपको कोई स्टिमुलेट करे हो और मेरे जहन में हम लोग सब ना मैं सॉरी जस्ट आई स्टार्ट स्पीकिंग इन हिंदी इज इज वेरी कंफर्टेबल आई जस्ट लुक्ड एट गुरिंदर एंड ही इज जस्ट कंप्लीटली ऑफ और हमारे जहन में लोगों के खाचे बने हुए की हाँ ये आदमी मिला आप दस मिनट बात करते हो आपको समझ में आता है ये कैसा आदमी है ना आप पांच मिनट पकड़ लेते हो उसको की हाँ ठीक है मोटा मोटी तुम ये हो ना उनके साथ मिलके ना कभी भी ऐसा लगा नहीं की हाँ पांच मिनट में समझ में आ गया आदमी उनकी हर मुलाकात उनसे जो है वो और नहीं और बेहतर और अलग करवट की रहती थी आई थिंक दैट वाज दैट दैट्स एन इंप्रेशन आई हैव ऑन मी ऑफ हिम आई थिंक कि 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 वो ही वाज कांस्टेंटली इंप्रूविंग ही वाज कांस्टेंटली थिंकिंग अबाउट व्हाट ही कैन डू नेक्स्ट हाउ ही कैन यू नो स्टिल इंप्रूव एंड डिस्पाइट द फैक्ट दैट ही वाज कंसीडर्ड एज वन ऑफ वन मतलब नॉट इवन इन आवर कंट्री बट वर्ल्ड वर्ल्ड बेस्ट एक्टर्स में उनका नाम आता था उसके बावजूद जो है वो कंटिन्यूसली अपना हर एक इंच बाय इंच वो अपनी लिमिट पुश कर रहे थे आई थिंक मैंने उनसे यही सीखा फैंटास्टिक सो अमेजिंग थैंक यू सो मच लेट्स मूव टू मनप्रीत हु इज इन द यूनिक पोजीशन ऑफ नोइंग हिम पर्सनली एज़ वेल एज़ अ बीटीएस व्हिच इज बिहाइंड द सीन्स ऑफ हाउ ही सस्ट आउट हिज वर्क एंड how he approached so many things and i think that would be wonderful for us to know the sort of halfway house you are in idhar bhi udhar bhi aapko dono pehlu se irfan ke bare mein pata hai that we love you to know but first before we get to that tell me when you met him first what was it like i'm a 90s kid um uh, my understanding of bollywood was very very different from what it is today and I had seen the show two thousand five two thousand six called Dar, which uh, in which Irfan played. Uh, he was a serial killer. Uh, it was again a star plus show, and as everybody says, it was his eyes, and everybody had stereotyped how those eyes work. And I was very scared of him. <laughs> I had actually not seen a single film of his before joining him because I was so scared of him. And. the first time so i used to work with an agency and they called me and said okay uh, you know you're going to be managing it fans so you need to go and meet him uh, he is having a press of uh, a, a screening a private screening for lunchbox and i can't tell you i was so scared because i had this perception of him being like he would be so difficult because he's so knowledgeable he's one of the best actors in the world and i have nothing i have no understanding of the business i'm going to be no use he's going to tell me to like go away after two days and i meet him and i remember my f- first time i met him at he was standing with vishal vishal sir and they both were discussing about the film and my senior introduced me and the only words i could say to him was hello sir that's all and i was so transfixed with the fact that this person is standing in front of me who i've been so scared all my life as an actor and i have this perception that he is the super intelligent world cinema guy and i have like this crazy idea of of this business and he just said jaake jaake picture dekho aur mujhe picture ke baad batana so lunchbox actually is my first full feature film of irfan that i've ever seen and wow. the day when i was told i'm going to be working with him oh. i can't thank like i'm so grateful and blessed because i i couldn't have imagined it and to work with him so closely um also uh, it's 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 a rare thing when a bts person and a person on like who interacts with him of on camera would say that he is just the same he is actually the same the interactions that he would have with his director uh, he was so genuine and real that what he was with anybody else he was the same person with us with his team uh, his sense of difficulty was never he was never a difficult actor per se his his reasons for what he his reasons for doing films were so different 
and it's such an it's like how Hansel sir said, Irfan to Irfan hai. Like he's just playing himself so beautifully and was in diverse. Uh, to learn so much from him and to it used to be a, it was to be a problem as to how do I connect with him? You know, the first six months because he's an avid reader. I can't discuss Bollywood films with him. Uh, I don't know what to talk to him. And then I realized, and he never, I never had the pressure because he respected and gave me that uh, space to be the person that I am. Uh, and I realized slow and steady that he was never trying to be a boss. He was always being a mentor. And that is a very rare quality where um, when you're, when the person you report to or a person you're working for actually gives you that respect of being who you are, irrespective of what your experience is, what your, uh, which background you come from, uh, lets you grow with him. And I literally feel like those seven years that I have worked with him, he's helped me evolve to be a, a better human being more than anything else. How lovely. Hansa, what made uh, Irfan stand out for you as an actor? I, I think, uh, you know, I, I first saw Irfan at a time when uh, acting was perceived as you know, very, it was, a, it was, you know, how you deliver dialogues, how you use your body. It was a very physical uh, kind of, you know, we were all exposed to this mainstream uh, Hindi film uh, you know, very loud kind of acting. And, you know, it was, I, I'd seen older films. You'd seen uh, Valdan Sahani, you'd seen Motila, you'd seen Dilip yeah. Saab. And you wondered what happened, you know, in between kya ho gaya? Why did the performances just suddenly go so over the top? And, uh, you know, and you'd gotten sort of conditioned to seeing uh, actors work that way. And then, you know, that, especially that star bestseller, Ek Sham Ki Mulaka, it was very, I mean, I recommend people watch it. Because, uh, you know, you suddenly saw that I was completely unnerved when I first saw it. I said, yeah, kuch kari nahi And then, uh, you know, slowly Irfan Khan grows on you. And you say, Ke, matlab, he has, he's just, he's just walked into the part. He's walked into the part. The character, Irfan, there is no, uh, you don't know what you're watching. It's, it's such a surreal experience where the actor, the character and everything, uh, you know, those boundaries disappear. And so that is something I saw then. And I, I mean, I have observed Irfan from that time until uh, Angrezi medium. I watched every film of his. I've had conversations about every performance, you know, uh, with him. Uh, you know, things that I've liked, things, things I did not like about those films. He would ask me uh, straight up what he would also criticize his own films. So, yeah, I thought there was something that Irfan... Uh, you know, brought to uh, a performance that was beyond uh, acting or interpretation or characterization. I think it was something very, very sublime, something sublime, something spiritual. And you almost uh, did not notice him. I mean, you, there was an economy, you know, it's very difficult to break it up into these uh, words, economy, performance, expression, because Irfan was none of that. Irfan was Irfan, you know, and so whatever that uh, senior person said, I think today it rings true. Irfan was Irfan. I mean, there, there can never be another uh, Irfan. Uh, and uh, I mean, that was his unique uh, quality. And I think what Irfan did in a bigger way, when Manoj Bajpayee started this whole thing about, you know, the uh, actor becoming a commercially saleable uh, uh, entity. And uh, Irfan took that to the next level. I mean, he made him, made the actor into an international uh, being, you know. So, uh, you know, he really gave a stature to actors. You know, Irfan Khan's contribution to uh, acting is uh, all that he achieved in this short while uh, for the cause of actors. If, if an Irfan Khan was not there, a Rajkumar Rao wouldn't be there. If an Irfan, Irfan Khan uh, wasn't there, yeah. Nawazuddin Siddiqui would not have been there. You know, Absolutely. We have, to, we have to credit Irfan Khan for that transformation. And today, the fact that I am alive and able to make movies is because Irfan Khan opened those doors. So we have to be grateful for that. 
Dada, uh, what made Irfan uh, stand out uh, uh, as an actor? You worked with him, of course, in Siku. Uh, but for you, uh, it would be wonderful to know that uh, when he was on set and his process a little bit, if, if you could. Um. I mean, of course, we all know about different facets of Irfan, what he has done. I just remember when I think Gurinder just said about the masculinity uh, factor uh, that, you know, that he wanted to challenge all, all the, the gender factor in him, you know. Uh, so I, in, in the entire shoot, he would, he would ask me uh, in Piku, do I actually fall in love? Do I actually fall in love? There's any love connection? He'll constantly ask me. I remember, and um, and we would discuss. I would never give a clear answer because even I was not clear myself. So um, when me and Juhi were writing the script, then also we left it quite open. So I wouldn't, I never could give a clear answer to him, and he will keep asking me. So do I look like like I have fallen in love, or do I look like you know I'm just having a conversation? Do I try? So I said, you interpret yourself. You know, it's I mean. I can tell you this is the parameters that I think. So I think, so what I learned that, you know, slowly, I think that he has worked in all kinds of films. Uh, he was working with all kinds of directors, all kinds of scripts. Scripts were written for him. Um, so so, so, so I, I remember one day we were shooting in the Ghats of Varanasi, you know. Uh, it was night. Uh, we were finished shooting around 12, 1 o'clock. And he just told me, Dada, will you wait? Uh, because I, I, it was in the winters and it was really, really beautiful, the hearts of Varanasi. So he said, Dada, bed down a thoda okay, we'll sit. So after the pack up, everybody went. So we just sat there and uh, and we started talking. So we sat there for an hour and I could see that, you know, what I could feel that there is some kind of a, he was transforming himself uh, to be more mystic, you know, uh, mm. some kind of a Sufism was uh, like, we don't have a term for Sufi actor. I think he was more of a Sufi. He was slowly becoming a Sufi actor where he could, you know, transform into that, you know, it's like going into a trance, you know. Uh, so I think that's what was happening because when I was interacting with when he, when his illness, when he got his illness and then we were, we, were, we became much closer. Uh, during the last last two uh, years, you know, uh, we spoke quite often, and he was uh, so I would talk to him about uh, uh, what Zakir said. Then we'll, I, I'll talk to him about breathing, and he will talk to me for two hours, three hours, only on breathing, or I know just moving on. And he had, I mean, he had so many things planned out. Of course, nobody knew that you know that he will pass off so you know early, but. Uh, I think that was his quality that, you know, he, he was slowly moving into transforming into a little upper level of possibly when your brain and subconscious way you move on. He was getting away from this novel conscious worldly things that's going on. Somewhere he was touching that. I felt, I mean, that's, I don't know I'm right or wrong, but you know, I felt that when he was talking to me, he was uh, going into a different so his preparation, he was asking him acting, um, it was quite simple that he will put everything in his hard disk. Um, it's like uh, he was not a very method that he will go lots of rehearsals. So in Piku, uh, it is a different problem. Uh, Mr. Bachchan is like a method. He will rehearse mm -hmm. for hours and hours and hours and hours. And sometimes the whole unit <laughs> is bored uh, of his rehearsals. And But he will not stop rehearsing. Uh, and on the other hand, Irfan, will just go and perform and every take is different. So I remember uh, he gave one license. He had to hand over a license to Mr. Bachchan. So he did something on rehearsal and then he, re we were ready for take. So in the take, he, he handed over the license with his left hand. So <laughs> the, sh the shot was not okay. And so Mr. Bachchan stopped. So Irfan, so aap mujhe right hand se doge ya left hand se doge? So Irfan never heard of this. He was he, he was performing on his own. So he said, 
<laughs> sir i'll uh, you tell me i'll i'll you know, no 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 i have no problem mr bachan said he, you can give it in the left hand right hand no problem but you tell me what this <laughs> so he said sir i don't know but you tell me i will use that <laughs> so you know that kind of a impromptu he was you know uh, so so he will in every take he will mature and mature you can go on with him say you can go on with him take after take and he will keep maturing and keep maturing so i think that's what he is you know so that's what he enjoyed i think that's what the uh, of i think uh, i would say uh, uh, of not only fun but you know as an art when you start uh, you know uh, maturing yourself every time i think that's that's when you become a great artist yeah so mm -hmm. i think he was a more of a sufi actor that's what i have interacted that's what i could feel that's so wonderfully put we we'll come back to that that's a very interesting thought that you brought out about his uh, you know the mystic quality of uh, where he was kind of going uh not just with his uh acting but also with his life in a way but we'll come back to that dana uh gurinder please tell us uh what made you uh, uh for you what made uh, ifan stand out as a as an actor on the international level because you work with some fine talents uh, worldwide what everyone is saying about him is so spot on and i think that he what we as directors like is to work with actors who are so thoroughly engaged with their own talent and their own uh skills i liked what you were saying about the spiritual side of him i agree with that i think he from his little gestures and his movements you know he was so in command of his um his talent that he he was channeling it in a funny sort of way and you never felt that he was acting you know he always felt that you know he he um he was engaged in some higher consciousness that even you might not even know yet and so by asking you questions he was just confirming for himself whether he's on the right track I mean I never actually worked with him but I think it would have been quite intimidating to work with him you know in some ways you know because he everything in him I think was a he was always testing you but not in a mean way I think more in trying to get to the essence of what it is what is filmmaking what is it to stand in front of a camera and communicate what what is the craft and he is definitely is an actor who was really involved in the craft of acting not just in physically but spiritually and politically actually you know uh, in terms of the choices he made and didn't make you know i mean i remember my kids being very upset in jurassic park where he's in the helicopter and then he dies why they couldn't understand why he died and then and then he they said to me why would he take a role where he dies he should be the hero you know he's the scientist and i and it got me thinking well why why did he take that role where he dies actually you know that was an interesting choice because he could do anything why did he take jurassic park and i think it's because he wanted to understand how that system worked as well as yeah. the other so he did he was interested to see how do you you know how do you work and i think what was interesting for me seeing him in international movies was his accent his how he how he dealt with the accent because of course for a lot of indian actors going uh, you know cross overing as you say you know the accent is 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 often an issue um just because of what is demanded in indian cinema uh and acting and hand gestures you know i remember i hope he won't mind me saying this but when uh, i met uh, anupam kher for uh, bendit like beckham you know uh i obviously i knew his work i knew he was an actor's actor and and the first time we started rehearsing i was like oh that's not going to work this is you are coming from a totally different style 
And it's because as an actor, he had, all, he had spent a career fighting for his screen space, I guess, and fighting, you know, to be seen in amongst bigger names, maybe, I don't know. But he was just like giving it all on, you know. And I said to him, you don't have to do that. You know, it's there, it's words. And, and the other actors complete you. You don't have, it's not all about you, you know, it's the other actors will complete you. And then I just gave him one note. I said, just don't move your arms. Don't move your body. Don't move your arms. Now do it. And then he found the stillness of this dignified father, you know, who had had a lifetime of struggle in Britain. And then, and then so in terms of Anupam and I, he then went on to make so many international films, right? With Ang Lee and God knows what, because of just understanding that difference, you know? Um, but I think with uh, Irfan, he already had that. He was actually doing that in Indian films, <laughs> you know? He was actually changing Indian films in that way, as you all have said, in terms of putting the, the performance making the performance nuanced, actually, and surprising. And the thing, and I think the reason why as a director, I think it would have been intimidating working with him is because you don't know what he's gonna do next. You don't know. Yes, right? and <laughs> yes, yes. say one thing to him and he'll take it a different way. And then, you know, you know, that's it. He did like to argue, that day he was with me, he liked to argue a lot, you know. He oh, did. yes, yes. Yeah, he did say, but why? And then I'd explain to him, he'd go, yeah, but why? You know, and um, and I think that's just him checking your integrity. Ma, he was an <laughs> artist full of integrity and he wanted to check that you were bringing the same integrity, you know, to your work, which is why he never had a, a wrong word to say about our mutual friend, Anoop Singh, you know, because he was all <laughs> puzzled. Puzzle, why am I and a new friends? We're such different people, such different directors. The films we make are like opposites. And he was terribly puzzled by, by that. He couldn't work that out. That was the one thing he couldn't work out. But he was draw, drawn to trying to figure that out, which is, I think, one reason he wanted to work with me, was to see why, what is it? What is this thing? So I think that's what it, the biggest thing that I will miss is this curiosity that he was an actor, he was a performer, he was con constantly curious, constantly curious about, about the medium and, and us as directors and also his co-actors and just being on a set, right? Just being on the set and bringing it alive. Mm -hmm. This conversation mm -hmm. is making me very sad, I have to say now. So. <laughs> Getting a bit heavy, yes. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. I'll tell you an, uh, an, uh, an interesting anecdote. We were shooting Kista and this was this, this uh, very tight budget film, five country collaboration and all of that. And Anoop was having a, a tough time with the European uh, producer because he was sort of clamping down very hard on creators and all of that. And uh, there was this very big day which we uh, all prepped for uh, in advance. And, you know, uh, the unit, the production people had reached and prepped up the whole place and all of that. And it was a very narrow window of opportunity. We had like an hour and a half or something like that to shoot. And everyone was ready. And Irfan had this elaborate like beard. Literally every hair had to be stuck into his uh, mustache and his beard and his Pagri, which used to crib non-stop about. We used to both sit together as to get this long wig put and he used to put this thing and he used to keep mumbling about how irritating it was and how annoying it was and the beard is sticking and it's irritating him and all of that. All of that had happened and we were ready to shoot and there's no fun. And everyone was like, where is Irfan? What has happened to Irfan? Where did you go on? Because we had that much, that much time to shoot. And Anoop, you could see him, he had gone white in the face. And uh, we looked everywhere, it was an old Haveli. And in the distance was Irfan flying a kite. <laughs> like a little kid, he'd just taken this kite and he was... He, and so somebody ran to him and said, what are you doing? So he said, hey, ho jayega, ho jayega, short, short. And I, 
so you know he understood that films are a part of uh, life life is not a part of films and so that i think is a perspective we as uh, people sometimes lose and so he came back and that shop was done in like Four minutes, and we had ample time to redo it and take different magnifications and angles and all of that. But he had his moment with his kite, so I hope you are not feeling bad for Gurinder because he's free as a kite now, wherever he is, and uh, bringing so much joy wherever he is. Uh, Meet up. Uh, oh, that's beautiful. What, what a lovely story. Yeah. What 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 made uh, Irfan stand out for you? You've seen his trajectory, so. briefly yeah. gosh it's um, you know it's actually like talking about a sibling because you've grown up from diaper stage to wherever so it's strange so um from in a nutshell uh, i would say from someone who was imitating nasir to someone who became inimitable that's wow. quite a project you know and uh, when we had just finished national school of drama in 1987 I was we were shooting and then I was just doing films back to back and everything. But um, a lot of my classmates had come into Bombay, and they were struggling to find work. And uh, it was like that. Irfan was someone who, if actually, took him 17 years, you know. And I, it must have needed a lot of strength, internal strength, to come out of drama school and spend 17 years in Bombay before you hit it as big as he did. Um, so it must have been very hard. I understood how hard it was because as soon as I came out, I became a star. But then, after a while, I reached a plateau. There were no more films being made, so then you have to stop being someone who is getting any work. So that's a different. Uh, so you understand the pain of not having work. Maybe later, maybe earlier. With Irfan, it was interesting because one of the early things we did together was a telling film for Govind Nilani called Jazire, which was just shortly after we graduated from drama school. It had it's an Ibsen play um, called Little Eon. This was the Hindi adaptation of it. It was for Doordarshan, and there was Ratna Pathak Shah in it playing Irfan's wife. I play his step sister, and he plays this intellectual writer who's taken a vacation because he wants to figure his life out. And when he comes back, the wife is extremely anxious about how is this change their relationship. And I, as a step sister, um, discover that I'm actually we are not related. So there is suddenly a different feeling that comes into the sibling relationship. So there was a particular scene that he and I had, which was just by just the two of us sitting and talking because his little son has drowned, and he needs to get away from his wife, who is hysterical, and the brother and sister, the step brother and sister, which was him and me, are sitting and talking. But there are undercurrents of. a new relationship that is beginning to emerge because the sister knows that she's actually not related to him and so there is a certain erotic underplay that's begun to happen very interesting complex characters and i'm a, you know when, when i see the performance now i realize oh my god we were just so young we were like 25 6 and we were playing these amazing characters with depth but the interesting thing what i found was that he went to shoot the film was released he saw it and then i get a phone call from him so i was really busy shooting other films so i didn't after seeing the film i didn't really do much else with it but he called to tell me to do a scene with me that we had done and to tell me what he thought was beautiful and how the silences had spoken so he if fun was somebody who would write from the word go not talk about a career like he never told me यार तू इतने बड़े डायरेक्टर्स के साथ काम करी मुझे मिलवा दे ही नेवर डिड दैट अम ही वाजन थिंकिंग बट व्हेन वी गॉट टुगेदर ही वाज टॉकिंग एक्टिंग ही वुड डिस्कस द न्यूएंसेस ऑफ द सीन दैट वी हैड डन टुगेदर एंड अ लिटिल लेटर व्हेन आई गॉट इनटू प्रोडक्शन अम ही व्हेन आई गॉट इनटू प्रोडक्शन आई डिड नो सैटरडे सस्पेंस व्हिच वाज बेस्ड ऑन एन अगाथा क्रिस्टी स्टोरी वेगली बट इट वाज मोस्टली डन अप इट वाज कॉल्ड सालगिरह which was interestingly Baman Irani's first ever acting role he was playing the husband who has decided to kill his wife on the second anniversary the wife's love who the guy who was interested in the wife that is Irfan comes along by the way looking for her etc it's still there i think that is the first time i think in the trajectory that um when i look back at Irfan's work now and i'm speaking as a as someone who loved him totally like a sibling a twin as a co-actress as many things 
uh, when you look back at the trajectory, um, I think it was with Anup that Irfan came into something of his own because in 19, this was 1996 that we did Salgira. And I remember Anup saying, you know, we need to cast somebody for the love, you know, this guy who's interested in this woman. And I said, my classmate Irfan, he's, I think he's a really good actor, so let's call him. And that's, I think, when Anup and Irfan met for the first time. And um, there was something in the way that Anup was shooting that kind of shifted something, I think, in Irfan, because there was the ability to, to sculpt the frame with yourself as an actor. So with Anup, I think Irfan found something that shifted for him and allowed him to connect to the training we had received about the spiritual construct that is the actor. Uh, in Salgira, this 45 minute drama. Because at the same, after that happened a lot of, prior to that had happened um, some stuff for Guldar Saab Kirdar, in which you'll find Irfan playing the way a theater actor plays in, the, in, in front of camera, improvising, you know it's a theater improvisation, it's really not meant for cinema. It's the same Irfan, but he's still trying to um, play what the director wants. I think with Salgira and with the space that Anup gave and the kind of connection they made, uh, this shift happened. And it is true that Irfan had reached that space within where, like I said earlier, from being someone who would say, like if you know a young musician does Sa Re Ga Ma Pa, but if you go Sa Re 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 Sa Re Sa Re Sa Re, you know you begin to perform with the breath, the moment, almost like a jazz musician. So I think it's true that Irfan had reached a tremendous space within himself. He had become an actor who was impossible to imitate because he was like a jazz musician. A jazz musician rarely ever, you know, plays the same yeah. note twice in the same way. Or like a classical Indian singer, you know. So he was like music. Irfan's performances were like, jazz music, they were like a fragrance. Um, if you breathe too hard, you'll miss the fragrance. You know, you have to just allow the fragrance to happen. I would say Fan's performances were really like the fragrance he would just exude from everything that he had internalized. Yeah, and the, sorry, uh, to, uh, yeah. uh, wrap up in the next uh, couple of minutes. And I think uh, uh, Gurinder needs to go. Um, so uh, I'd quickly like to touch upon uh, what what made Irfan stand out for you, Vijay, and then for you, Zafir. I think uh, the, 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 I just felt like people when they say Irfan was being Irfan, I completely disagree with that statement because the yes. thing is, if you if you observe his work closely, he's the only actor who's been able to inner uh, engineer himself. For different parts, he's the guy who's playing a played a Malu uh, a, a, a Malayalam Malayali character uh, in, in a film, and he's played a Rajasthani, he plays a Punjabi. He's he's the most authentic Bengali uh, actor in, in a film like Piku. He's uh, the transformation has been massive for me, uh, the, especially the inner work that he was doing. And the great factor that stands out for me for Irfan is the I can never tell what he's what is he going to do next in any scene you can never predict what this man is going to do and if he is if he's promised he's going to be leading it that this way he'll surprise you with, with with something and the and the ability to be in the truth was something which was so so powerful i consider him as one of the best in the world and uh, probably one of the top five actors that we've ever had on this planet he's one of them oh, absolutely. he mixes yeah. he makes us all proud i think if Brando was alive, he would have completely wanted to get an autograph from uh, Irfan Khan. <laughs> yes, absolutely, Vijay, totally. <laughs> Zakir, aap, uh, uh, Irfan, aap ke liye, as an actor, aap, uh, uh, kya chahenge? How, would you, how would you describe uh, Irfan as being special for you as an actor? I think Miri has not in this panel mein, ki as an actor, I would define kar As a person, I would like to speak about him. Um, Irfan, uh, Irfan Khan, that boy from Talk, is a story I am trying to imitate. I'm trying to live. Um, he made us all believe 
that if you if you are talented and if you work really hard aap um, there is no club which can stop you from entering um wo um ki aapki mehnat se aapko har us club ka pass mil sakta hai jo aapke liye denied hai uh unhone bhi to club bana diya unhone ha aur wo aur wo likha unhone hamare liye likha wo bilkul aur wo unko har bar jab aap aap dekhte ho wo wo aap witness karte ho aur aur not only he has touched us, us with his work but also with his kindness with everybody who's interacted with him um i met him very recently and my interaction has been so rich uh with him aur mere khayal se agar wo maine article nahi padha hota 2004 mein hasil ke baad ki kaise unhone nsd mein jhoot bola admission ke liye ki unhone bahut theater kiya hua jabki unhone theater nahi kiya hua tha hum nahi kiya um एक 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 आदमी जिसको आप देख रहे हो कि वो विलेन के किरदार निभाते वाला और आपको कब पता ही नहीं चला कि वो आदमी हीरो है यू नो नो टाइमलाइन टू इट लाइक है ना आपके हीरोज होते हैं जो विलेन की तरह काम कर रहे होते हासिल में मैंने वो फिल्म मुझे ऐसी मुझे मुंह जबानी याद है मैं मुझे रवा है वो फिल्म है ना कि ये साली आंख हमारी जो मारो तो मारना की लगे तुम्हारी जान को कि मारा है वो एक एक अल्फाज उनका बोला हुआ वो चाहे खराब से खराब काम में किसी ऐसी फिल्म में जो बिल्कुल सबको पता था कि यार डूड ये तो गड़बड़ी हो गई है ठीक है उसमें भी जब वो जिस जिस लम्हे वो स्क्रीन पे आए तो उन्होंने बिल्कुल एकदम उजाला सा कर दिया तो आई थिंक मेरे लिए एक्टर से कहीं बढ़कर उनकी वो कहानी वही मैं कोशिश कर रहा हूँ और आई थिंक वो उनसे जो सीखा मिला थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर फॉर शेयरिंग ऑल योर वंडरफुल इनसाइट्स एंड टेकिंग आउट द टाइम वी आर ऑल ब्लेस्ड टू बी टच्ड बाय हिज जीनियस थैंक यू थैंक यू एवरी सिंगल वन ऑफ यू